Hi guys, George Sprites here and wanted to talk about how to implement Tapjoy video ads onto your iOS app and this will be using Swift. So I won't be covering too much on the basics of Swift. You should already know pretty much the basics of how to make an iOS application and the basics of Swift. Um, we'll also be using CocoaPods for this tutorial, although you don't have to if you don't want to. So just to start off here, I created a simple single view application. Um, I'll be creating just a simple button and label uh, just to interact with. We'll eventually make the button pop up a joy tap video ad uh, and the label is just there for small bits of information not really necessary but uh, could be useful so pretty simple here just adding button and the label um, we're gonna hook it up to the view controller and uh, got to make sure that your view controller is of course subclass to the actual view controller swift file that comes in the template project So from here, I'm just creating a simple uh, IB action for the button. Whenever the button is pressed, this action is going to be called. Um, this will be so that whenever we do press a button, we'll be able to show an ad. And from there, also hook up the label up to the view controller just to make sure we have a reference for it. From there, I'm just going to set up a simple text for the label just to have some default uh, on there. And whenever the button is pressed, also, I want to change the label to have different just text just for information purposes. I quickly compiled and um, just ran this code just to make sure everything's pretty much set up uh, correctly, make sure there's no funny or weird bugs going on. Um, and sure enough, whenever I press the button, it changes over to button pressed. Um, the label itself is a little too small now, but I'll change that later. Otherwise, everything's working fine. Though. I personally like working with iPhone 5S screen size just because that's what I personally have but you can do it on any screen size, it really doesn't matter for this purpose. Okay, so from here we're just going to go to the actual TapJoy website. Um, it's free to make an account. It's not hard at all. It's just uh, home.tapjoy.com. We'll go to not a player and then log in, sign up. I personally like to sign up with my Gmail account, though if you don't want to, of course, you can just sign up with whatever other options they have available. Um, I just find it more convenient to use Google, especially for this just short video. Okay, once you've created an account, you'll get pretty much, um, just want to click, I'm a publisher here, uh, any company name is, should be fine, um, just read the terms of agreements and then start using Tapjoy, you'll get this home screen, um, lots of options here, um, you can explore it around, they start you off with a Tapjoy demo already, we'll be creating one just from scratch. They also have various things that you can do off the wall plus which are just different options they have we'll be creating a video but you have other options that they offer here so we're just going to go to create an app go in uh, just put your app name 
Mine is just tap joy test, but you can have yours, whatever you'd like. Portrait mode for me. And uh, whatever currency you use, feel free to just use whichever same one here. Okay, so from there you'll get uh, this screen of basic integration. Um, basically, it's just following a step-by-step -step guide. They provide an SDK here. Now your SDK key is going to be completely different from mine. This one probably will not even be working. Uh, I would have probably deleted this app already, so do not use the same SDK key. It'll be different for each app. Um, so there's two ways to actually install TapJoy. You could follow the instructions uh, that they have here where you download the SDK manually and then you add that uh, manually into your project. Personally, I prefer to use CocoaPods. Uh, it's way simpler, way faster. Um, if you don't already use CocoaPods, I'd recommend definitely looking it up. Um, here I do a quick installation of it in case you don't know how to use it. Um, but it just makes everything much easier, especially when you start using a lot more frameworks. So this is just the CocoaPods website. Um, you could look it over, but if you want to go ahead and install it, it'll have to be from the Mac OS X terminal. You just do sudo gen install CocoaPods, and that'll install CocoaPods on your machine. And then you should be almost ready, set to go. There's still a couple more steps to get it completely set up, but this is the first step anyways. Here I forgot to put sudo, so I'll, you'll if you don't do sudo, you'll probably get a, an error here. See, so you'll get, uh, don't have write permissions, so just do sudo gem install CocoaPods. It'll ask you for your password and just uh, put that sucker in. It won't show up there, but it is being written. I have already have it installed on my computer, so if on yours it might take a while to install if it's your first time using CocoaPods. Otherwise, you can pretty much just skip this, but it does sometimes take a while for it to install. Once you're set there, just go ahead and go back to your Xcode project. Go ahead and do file. Uh, you can create an empty file and just name it pod file. You can have um, Cocoa Pods themselves make a pod file for you, but I just like to do it manually. And you can just copy and paste this. This pretty much just um, going from the top, it'll be what platform you're targeting. You can do iOS 9.0 or higher or even lower. TapJoy SDK I think works with 8.0 even, not too sure. Uh, use frameworks usually for Swift and then you just want to put pod, TapJoy SDK, that's the pod you're actually installing. You go back into your terminal and just go to whichever directory you saved your project at. I saved mine under desktop developer TapJoy test, so I went there. If you do ls, you can see wherever your pod file is at. And uh, when it, once you reach that pod file directory, you just do pod install, and then CocoaPods should take care of the rest for you. You can see it says installing TapJoy SDK 11.9-1 or .1. Once that's set, you should see a screen pretty much similar to this, just that it's completed, and you should be set. You should be ready to go. Once you do have it installed, you want to stop uh, or exit completely out of this Xcode and you'll see that a new uh, XC workspace was created in your directory that you had your pod file. So you want to start using that one from now on instead of your regular Xcode project. And you can see that there's a pod file here and some pod. You don't have to worry about that, but it pretty much just installed that TapJoy SDK for you. Um, otherwise, it's just a completely normal Xcode project. You should build and run it just in case, in case there's any errors, but it should be set. Once that's ready, um, since TapJoy uses uh, Objective-C, you want to create a header file that's going to bridge it from Swift or to Swift. That way you can use Objective-C code in combined with Swift, so you just want to make a new Objective-C header file, name it your app name dash bridger dash header. 
and then just do import tapjoy forward slash tapjoy dot h and this will import pretty much the tapjoy framework so you can use it in your with your swift code once that's set, you have one final step just so that your Xcode project actually knows where that header file is. Um, for that, you want to just go to your project. I'll switch over there now. You can do a quick build just to make sure it's fine and without any errors. But just go to your project afterwards, build settings. All, make sure to select all or else you might not see it and then just go all the way down until you find Swift compiler dash general and then the Swift compiler dash general you'll see there's a, a setting here that says objective dash C bridger header and in that in that small place where you can input text and just type in the name of your header file. Um, if you put it in any one of your folders, you might want to add that folder name right in front of it for, for it to be able to find it or else it, you might get an error here. But once that's set, uh, you should be ready to use the Tapjoy framework. Um, you should be able to do a quick build without any errors. And you should be good to go. I did a quick build here just to make sure everything was working right. Uh, make sure our button and our useless label for now is working just the same um, so no errors no compile time errors so everything's fine there I made the label just a little bit bigger here just to actually make it slightly more useful instead of only seeing two letters um, just a preference thing it labels really not even necessary but So from here, the first step that you want to go ahead and do is um, Tapjoy tells us to go ahead and just add this code into our app delegate file. Um, you can add it even onto your view controller, but just to follow with uh, the instructions on that page, I went ahead and just added it onto the app delegate. Um, all the code from Tapjoy is in Objective C, so it does take just a little bit to translate it over. Usually the Xcode is pretty good with just letting you know the translations to Swift code. Uh, for example, this NS Notification Center, I think it's just Notification Center um, and Swift will let you know. Um, but just to, you just have to change it over from Objective-C to Swift. See right here, NS Notification Center has been changed to Notification Center, and Default Center also was changed to just default, and then that's pretty much it. And so in that default, um, should have a call, add observer, and we want to pretty much just copy it. Observer, um, we'll set it to self. Selector in Swift, um, we're going to add this function in later, but for now we'll just have a little placeholder here of selector. The name of the NS notification. This will error out in a bit, but we'll just just so we can keep it the same way that it was written above. We'll write it the same way. If you see these, um, if you see actually this drop-down menu. That's a good sign that at least Tapjoy framework was added in successfully. So when we added JCT connect success, we saw all those drop-downs. So that's a good sign. We're adding two functions here. TJC connect success and TJC connect fail. You can call these whatever you'd like, but just to keep it the same way that's in the documentation, I've added in pretty much the same way. And these will be the selectors we're going to be passing into the notification center. 
So one of them is for success and the other one is for fail. Now this one errors out here. You just need to make it into the raw value uh, of this name and that should fix it up. Just because it's a little bit not as smooth as objective C. And we have two of these. One of them again is for fail. One of them is for success. So here I'm just changing this over to connect fail and changing the selector also to the other function we created, connect fail. And so that will let us know if the connection to, chat, to tap joy was successful or not. Sometimes maybe there's no connection available and this will fail. Um, it doesn't error out. It doesn't give you a compile time error, but it will just let us know. So here I just put two print statements. The connection was successful, the connection failed. Um, so you may want to do further checks on your own application for that, but this is just pretty much a simple implementation of it. Afterwards, um, for debug, if just only when we're making the app, you want to set this equal to yes. This will give us some information on the console um, about what's happening. So we'll set that equal to true. Set debug enabled equal to true. And then we'll do tap joy connect again. This API key or this SDK key, it's um, specifically for my app. I have pretty much already deleted it, so it's not going to work. You're going to need to use your own account. Um, again, it's super free to sign up for one and make an app, so feel free to do that. But this one will probably not work if you try and copy and paste it. Now, the cool thing here is, let's see. You're just going to want to make a test device or add in a test device for Tapjoy just so that they don't send you live ads or ads that you can make money off of. Um, just while testing, you can see the setting up your test device information if you want more info. But basically just go open a new tab, go back to your pretty much main page. You'll find a little tab here called tools. Just go to the developer console. Once you have that open, just go ahead and run your app as long as you have that tapjoy.connect uh, string already in there. Once you have that, just run it. And if you go ahead and just go back to that developer's console, you should see your actual device um, has logged information to the tapjoy servers and they'll be, and you'll be able to set your device, either simulator or actual real device um, as a test device. So once you successfully run it, just go back to the developer tools and you'll see here there's three different um, events that it's logged and you can just add this one as a test device, call it anything you'd like, simulator, and you should be good to go. Anytime you would, you're just testing, make sure to add that as a test device to make sure you get just test uh, ads on there. So the next step is just actually adding in uh, a live ad. Um, meaning once we press that button, we want to generate a new, a new ad or a generate a new video ad. So this is this next page here. Um, before you start, and what's actually kind of cool here is if you actually run your app right now after you've set your device to a test device if you run it you'll actually see uh, in a full screen ad from tapjoy that they add just kind of i guess as a test but if you see this you're pretty much golden um, you have it pretty much set up completely and you can just exit it out of that um, now we want it so that when we press the button we get a new ad so to actually do that we have to first create a placement. So that's pretty much the first step. Just go ahead and do create placement. Um, do user initiated because we're going to be initiating it with the button. I'm going to call it stage failed uh, without any description. We'll do create now. And that creates that placement. Now we want it to be a video add um, so the first thing 
to create it, we need to go back to pretty much our just main dashboard where it says create content. We're going to be picking out one of these. Um, you can pick out any one of these that you want, but I'll be doing video. Now to create it, uh, it asks for quite a bunch of information, um, content name, you can name this whatever you'd like. Um, I'm calling it failed stage request only for test devices. You don't have to. Um, there's some options if you do want it for live traffic, but just for now, I'm putting it for only test. Uh, the placement, I put it as stage failed. And it also wants us to create a viral currency. Um, not sure why it's required just for a video ad, but you can just do create viral currency, um, Tapjoy managed or self managed for the sake of this tutorial. I'm just doing Tapjoy managed. Um, just a name for it, what if they're used for, the price equal to a dollar amount. And if there's any restrictions, uh, 13 plus or 18 plus. And that's about it. You can change it to self or Tapjoy managed. Um, I find that this one is a little bit simpler. Once you created that, um, I did have to start over for this one, but I just went back to it um, and created a new video ad all over again. And then from there, I was able to select that coins currency that I just created. Um, and these I just pretty much leave at default and they work fine for me. And so, you have that created, and again, this uh, the video ad was created under a user-initiated uh, stage failed. That's the name of the placement, and then the name of the video ad itself is failed stage request. Um, but the placement is pretty much the most important name that you need. And so here, to actually request it, you see that you'll need the placement with name, which we call it stage failed, the same as the one that was here. Um, again, this is an Objective C code, but we're just converting it over to to Swift code. And this is now on the view controller. So we need to create a new TJ placement uh, variable. So we're calling it uh, P and we're doing TJ placement, placement with name. It requires a string and this string is whatever you called your placement. I again called it stage failed. And so that's what I'm gonna be putting here. And we need a delegate. I'm putting the self as a view controller to actually be a delegate um, for this. So you do need to be um, the view controller has to be a TJ placement delegate. Um, it has to abide by that protocol. Um, so just check what requirements they have. I don't think you actually need to implement any of these, but they are pretty useful to have. Uh, in this tutorial, I put in uh, this function request it succeed request it fail and this pretty much just calls whenever your request to tapjoy succeeded or failed for that placement um, for example if you were to place the wrong name of that placement it would say failed if it succeeded it obviously succeeds um, so these are pretty much good callbacks just to implement um, but just make sure your view controller um, is at least has that TJ placement delegate up there. After that, um, we just have to do P request content, which actually does the request of getting that content. Um, pretty self explanatory there. Um, something to know about this though, so if in your app delegate, uh, it hasn't connected yet. If it does take, I've noticed a little, a couple seconds for it to to connect up to Tapjoy. So if you do request content and it hasn't connected fully yet, you're gonna get an error or that it hasn't loaded yet or it just never loads. Um, since we're doing it so early on here, it you'll see that it fails in a bit. And here I'm just making it a global variable so that we can it's basically reference that P from anywhere in our code. Um, since this is coming from Objective-C code, for some reason it just recognizes it as in any 
variable and we can just force it over to a TJ placement, which also helps us not have our code so messy here. We could just replace this with a P instead. So that's great. And so, let's see. So here, Tapjo is telling us that we should see if the content is ready before we try and show it. Um, here, I'm going to add this code when we press our button. We're going to check to see if that con is content is ready once we press that button. And if it is, then we want to go ahead and show that content with our view controller. So we'll do if p is content ready. Uh, then we'll do p display, but it's actually p show content show content and then just with self otherwise um no really need to do anything else it'll safely not show anything if it's not ready but for the sake of using our useless label we'll change the text of it to content is not ready make it a little bit more useful and also if our request did succeed, um, I'm going to change the text over to that it did succeed and that the request was successful. And same thing for requested fail. I want to know if for any reason the request failed. And again, these get called when you do request content. So one of these, either it succeeds or it fails. So we'll try running that and you can actually see already on my label it says request failed for some reason. Um, I try to even press the button and it doesn't show anything for some reason. And I double check just to make sure I have just everything ready and you can see there the label said the content isn't ready. Um, and what's happening here is that in the app delegate, we try to establish a connection with Tapjoy, um, but it does take a while. So right after app delegate, then obviously our view controller gets loaded. Um, and so we're running this code to request content right after we're trying to connect to Tapjoy. So it's that request is failing almost automatically. So we're just going to set up a timer so that we can wait just a couple of seconds. Um, which should give enough time to connect over and then we're going to request the, the content. You can imagine on a regular app you would probably want to try and load this as soon as possible which would probably be um, somewhere between view did load but either way you should try and request it as soon as possible but still wait a while to actually request the content. Um, here I just set up a timer for five seconds which was uh, enough time just to actually load the content and then for a selector we just did request content just a little function that I created down there which just does p request the content user info nil if it repeats false we try running this and let's see what happens says loaded down here and then the request succeeded this time but we try pressing the button and it says content not ready now since it's a video you have to remember that it does take I mean video does take a while to, for it to actually get transferred even if you have a great connection so here I mean you just have to wait a bit um, and on a regular app obviously you would have to make sure that this content is ready because there are you know, fairly expensive videos to try and load um, on a mobile device. 
Um, but you see there, I tried it after a few seconds and then it loaded again. And you can even see on the sidebar of the network, you can see how much it's loading. So it, it does take a while for it to load that content just because it is a video, but afterwards um, it does load just fine using this. There is also callback functions just to make sure that the video is ready. Um, you can see, I mean, just here, the content not ready will let you know that it's not ready. So you may want to design your app uh, some way around that. But that's about it, guys. Um, this is a pretty short tutorial, or I mean, it's 30 minutes, but it's, I think, as short as you're going to get to try and implement this um, just in a quick app. You'll obviously want to clean this up a little bit more and find better places to stop or maybe set your delegates up in a better way or have a known class that handles all your ads for you. But um, hope you like this video. If you guys like this video, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'll, if anybody wants, I can try making them for different ad networks for Swift. Um, and yeah, thanks guys. Bye.